And I think I think that probably had a lot to do with us knowing that it's a matter of time. Right. Mm-hmm. Right? And and most of us weren't prior combat guys. We were a young unit. And um it was interesting, man, because it was it was a, it was an eclectic group. We had a, a group a group from all walks of life, which is something that I always really admired about the military, regardless of what branch or special whatever, is that you are forced to communicate and to adapt with other people. Because if you don't, you're you're screwed. Yeah, and that's something that I always appreciated. And at the same time, it wore me the hell out because there were some guys, you know, there's just some guys that you're just like, you know, if I never saw that guy again, it'd be too soon. <laughs> and it's usually just because, you know, it's. Well, I always have to explain <clears throat> to civilians that I'm working with because a lot of people have the impression of civilians that, uh, you know, the civilians have the impression that everyone in the military is just like a machine that just is going to do what they're told. And if you're the sergeant, the corporal is going <laughs> to listen to you. And it's like, mm, well, not really doesn't work like that. Like, it'll work like that for a little while. It'll work for, you know, a little while. But over time, those 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 young guys will, or the junior people, if you're not leading them correctly, you're not going to be able to get things done. Oh, you know? it can turn into yeah. a shit show real quick. Real quick. <laughs> real quick. <laughs> <laughs> because you're also dealing with a bunch of dudes that feel like they, that are of the mindset. I, I can take on this world with one hand tied behind my back by myself. You're dealing with that. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Those yeah, yeah. alpha personalities are abundant. Yeah, yeah. And then you, you mix in a lot of testosterone and stupidity, and you have a very dangerous situation. <laughs> Low IQ, high T count. We like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what it is. That is it is. But um, Now, did you guys – did you guys – do like the so you're doing one weekend a month of drill and then you do two yeah. weeks in the summertime, but then in what 2003 you guys get called up or 2004? I think we got we got the call in N03, okay. I believe if I'm not mistaken. I've been blown up since then and hitting the head a lot, so I don't know. It, I think we got the call in 03 saying that we were going to be the, called okay. at a certain time and they then, gave you like a warning order like okay it's coming pretty much and then they said okay you're gonna go do your work up in uh 29 palms california Check. and so we you know we get to 29 palms and i was like i remember man <laughs> getting off that bird and i was just like this place sucks <laughs> Like it, I thought you were going to have something really <laughs> profound to say, no. and you said it. <laughs> like 29 Palms, this place sucks. It was, I was like, why? Why do, of course the Marines would have this base. Yeah, yeah. Of course. It made total sense. You know, it was just like, let the bitching begin. Yeah. And there were, it was abundant, bro. It was abundant. Because unless yeah. you had money to go to Palm Springs, yeah. I'll see you at 29 stomps. Yeah, there right you out go. the Get gate. Some. <laughs> and you, it, we are inevitably going to be fighting. This is the amazing thing. This is the amazing thing is I get asked, or I got asked on the podcast, you know, how do, you, how do I, you know, my, I, I, I checked into a battalion or I think a guy was a company commander and the morale's not good. How do we get the morale good? I'm like, do hard things. You want to improve morale? Do hard things. Yeah. And one of the things, like, what are you going to do at 29 stumps? What are you going to do there? Well, you're going to hang out with each other. That's what you're going to do. It's yep. going to suck. You're going to go in the field. You're going to sweat. It's going to be hot. And you're going to do hard things, and you're going to become tighter as a unit. That's what happens. Yeah, imagine that. Yeah, imagine that. Weird. <laughs> weird. It's just weird how that works. Now, who is running the training? Do they have so, a training cadre out there? So we uh, – I'm trying to remember. It was um, – or are you guys training yourselves? Or is your is your officer leading the training? Now, we had gunny sergeant. Yeah, I mean, we we had gunny. There was kind of both, mm-hmm. right? We had so like we would go to Mount Town or whatever, and we would have some mountain instructors out there. there. You go. And, Got it. But it wasn't because I mean, a lot of guys were forward deployed. Yeah, I mean, we're gone, and but we we literally we trained we trained hard. Yeah. Right? I mean, it was. You talk about training for the sake of muscle memory. Yeah, we it was gnarly what we did, and it was uh, like you said, we did a lot of hard things too, and we only got tighter and tighter yeah. and tighter as a unit. And but we it was uh, I mean I remember the first time we went out to do our, our first 
training evolution out at American Mines, and we we humped out there, of course, because you know don't want to use the vehicles. And uh, I remember we staged we staged our gear, and my platoon sergeant dropped his pack, and there was like a like a little rattlesnake den by where he dropped his pack. And so we had to go move, and then he goes to put his pack on to move, and there's a black scorpion on his pack. And I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> like, this is – and then we had a ton of bees that were go- – after the, the the water buffalo, you know, the trailer, the big water trailers. Mm-hmm. And it was like, we can't – Yeah. It's just – Yeah. It's inevitable Marine Corps shit. Like, it's the, – the suck factor is going to be – pegged the entire time yeah and it was just, it's it's like this guy was just looking down on us man like hey you're gonna earn it yeah <clears throat> one day i'm gonna have this uh team guy buddy of mine on he's got a lot of rattlesnake stories from the desert because rattlesnakes are very amusing you know once you start catching them and putting them in people's vehicles and putting them in their in their backpack sure. just stuff like that like yeah that's cool I'm telling you right now, that's good that. stuff. Right someone there, someone would have got stabbed. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Yeah, no, it's. It, and here's you, the, you want to see someone jump though. Yeah, yeah, it does. But hey, you know they don't know that the fangs have been removed. Rip the fangs out with a Leatherman. <laughs> Ask me how much I care. <laughs> you completely missing the point. <laughs> it's the principle. Yeah, <laughs> snake season. Get some, dude. It was the some of the best. <laughs> The dark greens do not like the, the the little creatures and the creepy crawlies. <laughs> and seeing some of the reactions of some of the dark greens was... What's the dark greens? They're, they're to be politically correct, they're African-American Marines. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gotcha. Dark green Marines. Gotcha. Call them gotcha. dark greens. And, and they know. And they, uh, I mean, they call them so... It's accepted. Right. It doesn't bother them. Dark they, greens. They don't write their congressmen. <laughs> It's it's yeah. unbelievable the way that works. So there there it's you know, and I got to see one. I just spoke at this uh deal a couple of days ago. No, it was yesterday. And one of the Marines I served with was there. It was dark green. And uh man, it was all it was probably hadn't seen him in a decade. Mm-hmm. Didn't miss a beat. Mm-hmm. It was it was like seriously didn't miss a beat. And I'm like, man, that was God, just imagine. Imagine if mankind could have a taste of that, just a taste. Mm-hmm. It would be. Imagine how much better the spinning ball of chaos would be. But it's. It was awesome. It was just good to see him and and to see the way that he changed. You just see the maturity over time. You know the, of of how life can it alters your course and alters your mindset because of the things you experience and you go through and. And the how many times you're taught how human you are, you know. It was it was cool. It was good for the soul, you know. And uh, yeah, it was just cool to see him and be able to embrace that dude. And I mean, I, that's my family. That is, I don't give a shit what color his skin is. That dude's my blood, and that's just the way it is. It's the way it always will be. But we, um, and he used to he used to annoy the shit out of me. Like I used to thought think like his. His mouth is never going to shut. <laughs> like one of these days, man. One of these days. And, uh, but it was so epic because it was like, that's my bro, you know? And it was, it was just awesome, man. It just goes to show you, like, we get these little reminders in life. If, if you just shut your mouth and listen, you get these little reminders of how worth it everything's been and what purpose everything has served. And it was cool to see that I got one of those, yeah. you know, and it gives me, it was a little fuel for the soul to, to keep going. 